Hey everybody, welcome to, what is this, part 6 of our calculator and WPF uh, tutorial, I guess. If you guys enjoy this content, don't forget to hit subscribe and like, and we're just going to continue where we left off in part 5. Um, so in the last time that we, we met here, I added the subtraction logic, and I said I was going to perhaps do the rest and then maybe make another row just for the clear button and maybe a decimal point because those are important too. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's, since we already did subtraction, let's do addition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this click event in order for us to get a new one. And then we can see this new event handler. We'll click on that and you can see it's being made. So we're basically going to do the same thing that we did with the subtraction. Um, so I'm just going to copy this logic here. And then the only difference is the operation is going to be plus. And this would be a good time maybe to consider using the same event and then having a switch like we are when you hit the equals and then, um, you know, depending on what you hit, you just change the operation. But I'm lazy. Uh, I'm not going to do it like that. Really, you can do it however you prefer. So now it's plus and then instead of minus when we hit equals we're going to add a case where it's plus and then we can go ahead and do the logic for that so I'm going to add a break so that squiggly line goes away okay and let's just do yeah let's just do the same thing I'm literally going to copy this and the only difference is going to be the plus all right, and I think this makes sense. Um, a local variable function named put temp. So I wonder if this this shouldn't be in the same scope. I wouldn't think, but let me try just changing the name. I bet I bet it is in the same. I don't know why this is considered in the same scope. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to declare this. Uh, this is the original one. I'm going to declare this outside of the case. Now we don't need these doubles anymore. And I'm going to remove this one. And oops, I didn't mean to put it there. I meant to put it up here out of the switch statement. There we go. It looks better. So that makes sense, right? Now we have it outside. Let me put a semicolon there. And this seems to be okay. So let me go ahead and run this and just see if it works as we expect it to work. Um, by the way, I got some tea tonight. It's my drink of choice. Okay, uh, let's do 6 plus 3. Let's do 6 plus 3 equals 9. Perfect. Okay, so for the heck of it, I am just going to, before we even make the events, I am just going to do the other cases. So we got plus minus um, sum, I guess, is what we can call the multiplication. And instead of plus, it's going to... And let me end running the program. That's why it's purple. Squiggly is now showing. Uh, so we're going to multiply instead. And let me paste again. Sum. Um, and then, I don't know. Divide. <laughs> Inconsistent naming. But that's okay. Uh, and I guess in divide, it's a little special, right? You can't divide by zero. So maybe we should do an if, uh, if output is not equal to, I guess it should be double parse output is not equal to zero, right? Because output's technically a string, but if we want to compare it with zero, we have to make it a double. So if that is not equal to zero, um, we'll do this. And then if it is, it just won't do anything. It'll just break out of this case. It's not going to run anything. So okay, uh, that should be okay. Let's go ahead. Let's save that. And then let's go to this. And let's start with divide. So divide button, let's go ahead and make a new event. 
All right, and while we're here, let's just do the multiplication. I named it times <laughs> instead of instead of whatever I named it. Uh, it should be product, not sum, huh? There we go. Yeah, whatever. You guys know what I meant. Uh, times button click. Yeah. Okay. So we need product and divide. So once again, I'm going to copy all of this. And yeah, we might clean this up in the future. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do the quick and dirty way. Product. Okay. A lot of case statements. All right, let's try. Let's try one at a time. And unfortunately, we have to close the program each time we run it because there's no clear button. So nine divided by three equal to three. Can't really test that. Let's do uh, what? Twenty-seven. Oh, yeah. I can't. I can't do that, can I? Let's do twenty-seven divided by three, so we know that it actually gives us the right answer. Nine. Cool. All right, now let's try multiplication. And let's do 6 times 3 is 18. Perfect. Look at that. We actually have a semi-working calculator. The only thing that we need now is probably another row. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make all of these rows stars from now on. All right. And unfortunately for us, we need to shift everything down one, I think. Now you can you can orient yours differently, but I want to put the buttons. I might put the equals down here and I might leave all these, but I'm going to put the number buttons um, down one. And I'll go ahead and skip all of this and come back to you when this is done. Okay, uh, I'm back. I moved everything down and I moved the equals button down to the bottom right. And up here somewhere, I want to put the clear, and I think I'm going to put it right here. So I'm going to copy the 7 button and just throw it on at the top. Okay, instead of 7 button, it's going to be clear button or BTN to keep with the naming um, that we've given it. And what should the content be for this? I think just like a C for clear. That makes sense. Uh, row is actually going to be one and then I want it over what two there we go I guess C makes sense yeah I don't need to spell out clear because um, I think that's what the calculator here on Windows has yeah they have a C for clear we might want to add a backspace too I don't know but at least the clear will be very useful so let's go ahead and make a new event for this and it's going to be clear button dot click or underscore click and then let's find it at the bottom here so what we want to do is now we want we don't want to make output equal to an empty string and the reason being I think let me think about this temp no yeah we can make output an empty string because we have temp. I was thinking, you know, if we press 9 and then we press minus and then we type in some number and then we hit clear, it's going to it's going to clear the output, but no, that's what the temp is for. So, uh yeah, we can clear output. So, let's just do that. Output is going to equal an empty string. Um and then we want output text block dot text to equal output. That makes sense. Okay. Let's see if that works now. So that should save us a lot of time when trying to test this because as we run things, uh, actually now that, yeah, check that out. So now that we, another good product or, um, yeah, another product of making our columns and rows those stars is the buttons now, they move with how large you make this calculator, how, long, how large you make the view. 
as I make it bigger, the buttons will get bigger. Of course, the content is, the font size is going to stay the same, but the buttons are going to get bigger. So that's kind of nice. So let's do 9, and then we'll hit clear. And it disappears. Look at that. So let's do 96 uh, divided by 2 equals 48. All right, let's do 90. We'll clear that. Let's do 96 divided by 2. I'll clear it. And then 4, 24. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. So that works as expected. Um, let's think what else we want to add. Do we want to add anything else? Basically, we have a working calculator now. We have everything that we would need it to. We might want to do something like to the power of this, or maybe squared. We want a squared button. Um, maybe I, sh I should do that. Let's add a squared button here in the top left. It's another common operation, I guess. So I'm going to copy the clear button, and I'm just going to paste the copy below it. Let's call it square button. And I guess maybe we should move it over first. Uh, I don't really know the best way. What's it look like on the Windows calculator? X and then was that superscript 2? I don't know how to do that or what the Unicode is. I can maybe search that later, but we can do that for now. Um, and then click, we'll make a new event. Square button, click. So this one's this one's gonna be easy. We don't have to worry about the previous text and then wait for the next number to come in. Or not previous text, previous number, and then wait for the next number to come in, and then do the operation. We just take the current output and then we square it. So Let's go ahead and let's make another, let's make a double variable, call it square. And that's going to be um, double dot parse and output. So we're taking the output value, we're turning it into a double, and then output is going to equal square. Or maybe it's just time square. Yeah, I don't think that's it. I've never actually done that in C sharp. Square times square. Why will that not work? Double type string. Ah, yeah, we gotta make that a string now, don't we? So I'll put everything in parentheses and then to string. Change it back to a string. And then we do output text block dot text is going to equal output. I know I've been really inconsistent with my spacing, so I'm just going to space it like that. Okay. How's that? I think that works. Let me try running this. And let's do 2 squared. Now, does it do... Okay, yeah, you don't have to hit equals in order to do that. Perfect. Check this out, guys. We have an actual... Running calculator now. Um, some things I would like to see added to this, and maybe you want to get a head start on this. A decimal point, and then I'm going to clean up how this looks a little bit. It looks a little bland. I want to put a box around the output here, like like you see here. Well, I guess you don't see a box, but it kind of shows a little box in the in the icon down here. I want to make a box. I just want to make it look a little prettier. Um, that'll probably take me some time just to play around with it on my own, and then I'll make a video on how I do it after I, I kind of play around with it. I feel like styling is one of those things where you just have to play around and see what fits best, um, color-wise and, and, and spacing-wise and all that good stuff. Um, I'm thinking about rounding the button corners and, and all that good stuff, so stick around for that video. Um, but yeah. Congratulations, we basically have a working calculator now. So what if we do 2 squared times 4? Yeah, look at that. That's great. So we may find some bugs later on. Anyway, 
I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, and don't forget to subscribe.